सो हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम यू ऑल टू दिस वीडियो सो वी आर कंटिन्यूइंग विद द टॉपिक्स ऑफ मॉड्यूल टू इट सेल्फ वेयर वी हैव लेफ्ट इन द प्रीवियस वीडियो सो टिल नाउ इन द प्रीवियस सेक्शंस वी हैड डिस्कस द कॉन्सेप्ट फ्रॉम मॉड्यूल टू रिलेटेड टू द बाइनरी फेस शिफ्ट कींग एंड इट्स प्रोबेबिलिटी एरर कॉर्डरेजर फेस शिफ्ट कींग अलॉन्ग विथ इट्स प्रोबेबिलिटी एरर एंड अलॉन्ग विथ देयर कॉन्स्टिलेशन डायग्राम्स all of things all of those things we have discussed and uh, those are the high chances that they might be asking for the exam point of view so there is one more kind of uh, psk circuit okay that is very important phase shift keying circuit that is called as m array psk circuit okay so here this m stands for the number of shifts which is taking place for example in a binary we had two for quadrature we had four but for m we could be choosing the random value in such a way that you would be getting the function okay so that is a special case qpsk circuit with respect to the m value here okay so that's why this is called as m array psk this is again in mentioned in your syllabus so that's why i thought to do this so let us get to the concept now m array psk circuit so qpsk is a special case in the generic generic form of psk commonly referred to as m array psk where the phase of the carrier takes one of the m possible values okay so i have told you the phase would be taking any one of the m possible values which we decide okay so that's why it is mentioned like this where the phase theta i is mentioned as 2 into i minus 1 pi divided by m where i varies from 1 to m during each signaling interview of duration t one of the m possible signals are given are defined in such a way okay that is given by si of t is equal to under root 2e divided by t cos of 2 pi st plus 2 pi by m into i minus 1 where i varies from 1 to m so this si of t is sent where e is the energy signal per symbol the carrier frequency fc that is equal to nc by t for some fixed integer nc okay so these are the parameters mentioned with respect to this si of t so now each si of t may be expanded in terms of the two basis functions so those two basis functions are defined as phi1 of t and phi2 of t the signal constellation of m array psk is therefore two dimensional okay why because we are using only the two orthonormal basis function with respect to phi1 of t and phi2 of t in time domain function so that's why there is the dimension of this m array psk is two dimensional in nature okay so the m message points are equally spaced on a circle of radius under root e here which is mentioned here and the center at the origin okay so that center at the origin that is zero is illustrated in this figure 2.7 a for the case of octa phase shift key okay why this term octa phase came because we have taken the value of m is equal to 8 here okay so that's why this is called as octa phase shift keying so that's why it is divided into eight separate quadrants for this circle here okay so that is mentioned as under root e radius the signals are phi1 and phi2 and octa phase so it starts from m1 message point m2 m3 m4 m5 m6 m7 and m8 so it covers all the eight regions under this octa phase structure okay so these are the radius points which is mentioned here for this quadrant that is e and e and for this negative quadrant it is minus e and minus e okay so in this way it is illustrated so here for one particular boundary uh, we have, have we are having the angles of pi by m and uh, the boundary which is generated through this uh, structure that is called as decision boundary and this points which are generated these points are all called as message points here okay so the region which is getting divided that boundary area is called as decision boundary and the angle generated is pi by m and the points are called as message points okay so these things you need to be knowing in order to be understanding the m array psk circuit okay so these diagrams are also called as signal space diagrams under m array psk circuits okay so please note this down these two are very important so from figure 2.7a we see that the signal space diagram is circularly symmetric in nature why it is symmetric because you see here if you observe this very carefully it is divided into eight parts in a equally integrated manner so that's why all of these regions are symmetric to each other to develop an approximate formula for the average probability of symbol error for mri psk we use the application of union bound okay that is suppose 
that the transmitted signal corresponds to the message point M1 whose coordinates along the phi1 minus and phi2 minus axis are given as plus E and 0 respectively. The nearest message points of M1 are M2 and M8 which, is are, on, which are on either sides of M1. You see here for M1 the corresponding points which are into their neighbor if the, the if we consider this one decision region here the corresponding points with respect to m1 are given as m2 and m8 okay so uh, similarly if we consider m2 the neighboring points are m3 and m1 and it goes on for all the points okay suppose that the ratio root e by n0 is the is large enough to consider the nearest two message points one of either side of M1 as potential candidates for being mistaken for M1 due to the channel noise. Okay. So this is illustrated in figure 2.7b for the case of M equal to 8. The Euclidean distance for each of these two points from M1 is given by D12. Okay. So that D12 or it is also called as D18 that those distances are called as Euclidean distances between the message points. Okay. So those that can be derived from the equation. 2 root e sine of pi by m okay so if this is the formula in order to find the euclidean distance between each points in the uh, signal space diagram of the mre psk circuit where the probability error pe is given by q into d12 square divided by 2 n not the whole root to yield the average probability of symbol error for coherent mre psk as uh, pe is nearly equal to 2 q into under root 4 e sine square pi by m divided by 2 and not here the message m1 will be associated with m2 and m8 due to noise okay so therefore 2q is getting generated because uh, the neighboring points are m2 as well as m8 so that's why two times the uh, field is getting replaced with respect to the central message point m1 okay so that's why this 2q factor has come into the picture so then pe is given a written as 2q into just to split this and we could be writing it as a 2e divided by n0 under root sine pi by m. Okay, so where after simplifying we would be getting this probability error for m array psk circuit. Okay, where it is assumed that m is greater than or equal to 4. But for m equal to 4 the above equation reduces the same form as given in qpsk. Okay, so this is the in general way for m array psk circuit for an 8 point structure it is given. But if you want to assume where the value of m equal to 4 then it would be following the same pattern as the QPSK. Whatever we got the probability error for QPSK, those that only would be, we would be getting for the m array psk circuit also. Okay. So that's why this circuit is called as m array psk circuit. Okay. So here we have one more concept which is not so important but still I thought to do it. That is m array quadrature amplitude modulation circuit. Okay. What do you mean by this m array QM, QAM circuit? So let us see here now. If the constant envelope constraint is removed from MRE PSK system and permit the in phase and quadrature components to independent, we get new modulation scheme circuit that is called as MRE quadrature amplitude modulated circuit. Okay, so the QAM is a hybrid form of modulation in that the carrier experiences amplitude as well as phase modulation. Okay, the hybrid form is it is not known to everybody. Okay, it would be doing the operation secretly with respect to the carrier and the phase signals formed. Okay. In MRE PAM as compared to QAM, the signal space diagram is one dimensional. The MRE QAM is two dimensional as it involves two orthogonal passband basis functions. Okay. So those two orthogonal passband basis functions with respect to PSK are given as, as mentioned, that is phi1 of t and phi2 of t, right? So here it is mentioned, right? Phi1 of t and phi2 of t. So that's why we are getting phi1 of t that is defined as root 2 by t cos 2 pi f c t and phi2 of t is given as root 2 by t sin 2 pi of ct for the opposite sets. Okay, so phi1 of t or phi2 of t are defined in such a way. Both varies from 0 to t with the time period. Okay, let d min be, denote the minimum distance between any two message points in the QAM constellation circuit. Then the proje projections of the ith message point on the phi1 minus and phi2 minus axis are respectively defined as by ai into d min by 2 and di into d min by 2 where i would be varying from 1 to m with the separation between two message points in the signal space diagram being proportional to the square root of energy. So therefore we may be saying that d min by 2 is equal to 
under root e naught. Okay, so that's why if you consider the signal space diagram, the com constant terms with respect to both phi one and phi two basis functions are a i and b i. It will be having the constant terms of d min by two. So that's why those two message points in a signal space diagram are being proportional to the square root of energy produced. Okay, so that's why it is replaced by d min by two is equal to under root e naught. Okay, where e naught is the energy of the message signal with the lowest amplitude okay so the amplitude is which is considered is the lowest amplitude in this case that is e naught okay therefore the transmitted m array qam signal for the symbol k can be defined as in terms of e naught that is sk of t for this m array qam signal is given defined as 2 e naught by t under root ak cos 2 pi fct minus 2 e naught by t under root bk sin 2 pi fct Okay, where T varies from 0 to capital T and K is equal to 0 plus or minus 1 plus or minus 2 goes on. Okay, set of integers. So, in this way, the transmitted M array QAM signal is defined. Okay, so this thing you need to be noting down this equation with respect to M array quadrature amplitude modulation circuit. Okay, so yeah, this is all about the M array PSK and QAM circuit part. Hope you understood this. This is very important question guys. There are high chances that they might be asking this question in the final exam as well. So that's why please note it down. So that's all for this video guys. We'll see you in the next video. Thank you.